That is why is it doing that? That makes Thank you. Yes. I might mention that I just got off this morning that NIDA is at nursing home on Mill Street. Oh. Bridgewater. Okay. It was Bridgewater. She said it's changed names. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. That I was aware of. She, oh. fell, she fell last week at, at home. She said, I just got my two feet tied up trying to get to my oh. chair. She was in the hospital for a few days, and then yesterday they moved her. To where? Bridgewater. We'll definitely keep her in our prayers. That's sorry she had another fall. Mm -hmm. That's tough. That's tough. Um, any other announcements as we're getting started? No. Okay. Well, then we'll begin with our opening dialogue. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of your servant, David. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn of our high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath that you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. In the desert of compassion of our God, the dawn of our eyes shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn of our eyes shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn of our eyes shall break upon us. Operator there. <laughs>
long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these days, what is God has spoken to us by the Son? A reading from Matthew. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For, your, for if you forgive their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. so dearly loved by God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's something really incredible and special about the Lord's Prayer. For a lot of us, this is one of the first prayers that we ever learn as a child, and it's probably one of the few prayers that will stay with so many people through their entire life. There's a lot of reasons for this. Um, not only is this the prayer, the one that Jesus taught us as a model for how to pray, but it's really well suited to being in a rhythm. We say it with a certain phrasing and with a certain cadence and with a certain beat, and so it makes us memorize it really well. And if you've ever been around someone who experiences any form of memory loss or dementia or anything along those lines, it's one of the things that seems to continue to stay deep into their brain. And when it's taught to us, it seems to seep into our bones. I've met, I have had times when I've talked with someone who doesn't seem to remember their own name, but if you start the Lord's Prayer, they'll join right in. Jesus taught this prayer to his followers after they requested it. He had just reminded that his followers that when you pray publicly with the intention of everyone seeing you, that, that isn't what God is asking you to do. He, he says that we should pray behind closed doors and to give to those in need without showing it, to do good without people expecting to love you for doing it. So it makes sense that then the disciples said, well, then how are we supposed to pray? You've told us how we're not supposed to. Now tell us how we should. And so that's what he did. In general, he's kind of saying that our prayers should have a few different things. We praise God and the holiness of God. We give thanks to God. 
We confess that we are sinful, we give petitions or we make requests, and then we pray for others. Now something that you may or may not have noticed about the Lord's Prayer is that you can't pray it just for yourself. It's impossible. You can't pray the Lord's Prayer without also praying for your neighbor. Jesus taught the disciples so that they would know how to pray, and so it's really clear that Jesus didn't want people to just pray for themselves and pray to God just between them and God. He wanted people to pray for a community. Throughout the entire prayer, there is no I, there is no my, there is no mine. It is all us and our and we. Our Father in heaven, forgive us our trespasses. Give us this day our daily bread. We don't say, my Father in heaven. We don't say, give me this day my daily bread. <laughs> and I think that Jesus knew that to follow his example in our lives was going to be hard. It was going to be difficult. And I think he knew that the way that people would stay together is if they would do the, his work together as a community of believers, not on their own. The most recent estimate that I was able to find is that there are somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.3 billion people living in the world who identify as Christian. 2.3 billion people. Every single time you pray the Lord's Prayer, you are praying for every single one of them. Whether you know them, whether you will ever know them, whether you speak the same language or not, whether you worship like them or whether you agree with them on all kinds of matters of divisive issues that exist in our world, whether you even like them very much, you are still praying for them when you pray the Lord's Prayer. And every time one of them prays the Lord's Prayer, they're praying for you. So imagine that. Every single time that someone says the Lord's Prayer here, or across town, or across the nation, or across the world, every single time, they're praying for you, their fellow Christian, their fellow sinner who needs forgiveness, their fellow sinner who needs their daily bread, so let's assume that there are a whole lot of not very church-going Christians in the world, which may actually be the truth, but that's a whole other sermon. Which, so, but let's assume that there are a lot of Christians who only say the Lord's Prayer maybe twice a year because they go to, Christ, because they go to church on Easter and Christmas, okay? So let's, let's just assume that. So assuming on average that a Christian says the Lord's Prayer twice in a year, that means that in the course of one year, you are being prayed for over four billion times. Four billion times. And when you pray, you pray for 2.3 billion people every week. Jesus teaches us how to pray. It's no surprise that Jesus taught us to pray using our and us and we and didn't teach us to pray I, me, or mine. God knows that we're at our best when we pray together, when we pray for one another and when we let others pray for us. Most of us know the Lord's Prayer by heart and most of us will know it our entire lives. And every time we pray, pray it, we are praying for an entire world of believers. We pray that they have their daily needs and that their sins are forgiven and that they're kept safe from temptation. And as you spend time with the Lord's Prayer this day, this week, this month, however often it enters your prayer life, spend some time just remembering that everyone else is praying for you too and that you are praying for them. Because, my dear beloved children of God, we are called to pray for one another.
sins in your own body on a tree so that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness have mercy upon us and at the hour of our death and grant to us your servants with all others who devoutly remember your blessed passion a holy and peaceful life in this world and through your grace eternal glory in the life to come where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign God forever Amen. And so, gathered in by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Help us, Jerry. Sure. That way you can get your feet in there. Yeah. yeah. You got some people who you like to see it. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. Yeah. 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 I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will. I was going to say, I can really turn off the stream. And then, if you even want to wait just about three or four minutes, I can reach about now. So, we're going to get to the end of the year. We'll 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 get to